What's up, YouTube? Leo Shank here, host of the Extreme Full Efficient channel, broadcasting directly from my basement. <laughs> Anyways, today I'm bringing you guys a, a very short video on how to fish for brown trout after heavy periods of rain. I was very reluctant about posting this video online because, you know, that fishing session didn't end up too well for me, truth be told, okay? Uh, it's a very short video because I, I couldn't finish the video down at the Painted Pack Creek that day. You know, I started and I had this wonderful idea, you know, today I'm going to do a tutorial video, teach guys the different scenarios, right, where to fish using an inline spinner for trout when the creek is actually high and murky, muddy, right, due to the rain. And you know, I went down there, I fished, I caught fish, I caught my limit that day, don't take me wrong, you know, I caught five fish, I caught way more than five fish, I released some fish, but what happened is, in the middle of doing the tutorial, it started to rain, you know, and you know, when it starts to rain, the GoPro quality is just not the best anymore, because I can't use my microphone, I need to use the closed case for the GoPro, so I stopped the video right there, right? And the video didn't really come to a completion. But anyways, I thought it would be a waste to not publish this on YouTube, because this video is very didactic, you know, you are going to learn a good deal from this video, which is why, you know, I decided to post the short footage of it, including an introduction and a final and ending from my basement, okay? So enjoy the footage, and if you are here also to learn and you want to know more about inline spinners, right, on creeks after heavy periods of rain, stay tuned after you watch the footage because there is going to be a small lesson, a didactic, you know, part of the video there, okay? Tie lines, fellas. Enjoy. Fish on! Fish on! Yeah! Water level's high here at the Penny Pack Creek due to the rain. But who cares, man? We're gonna catch the trout anyway. Right on. Inline spinner right here. Woo! We got some brown. We got some brown. Brown trout action right here on the inline spinner, folks. Right under the Roosevelt Boulevard Dam. Oh my. Well, I, could, I shouldn't call this Johnson anymore, right? On my minnow spin by Johnson here. Beautiful brown trout, first one of the day. As you guys can see, a spinner is working well. And as I have told you guys, right? It just rained yesterday, previous two days. We got a little creek here raging, all right? You guys can see water levels are higher than usual. And it's still, you know, the spinner is working well. All right, man, let's catch some more, folks. Now, since this is a spinner tutorial, let me just run you guys the scenario here, right, of how I caught this fish. What happened was very simple. As you guys can see, water, water is getting dropped from the upper side of the dam down the dam, right? So it creates a current right here. And as you guys can see, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but you see this little line that goes right here? When you have lines like that in the creek, it means you have objects, very shallow objects. The water is very shallow over there. In other words, just by the situation over here, okay, you can see that the current comes out on this side, it forms a little eddy on this side, okay, and there's a pool of water that is deeper, okay? And this is where I was casting, right? I was casting right before the shallow water because I thought the trout are going to be concentrated over there. They're probably not in the high current area, right? They want to save energy. And it just so happens that this space right here is an awesome space for them to ambush prey that is coming down from the current and so on. So I cast my spinner against you know, the current, right? And I was just reeling in very slow. Don't forget, higher you go against the current, is lower you want to reel it in your spinner, right? So it can actually sink, okay? This is scenario number one. Let's catch some more fish. Hopefully we'll catch some more fish on the spinner. Oh, 
Bouchon. Shroud number two of the day. Shroud number two of the day on the inline spinner. Whew, he's trashing, he's trashing. But you can't get away. No, you are going now to Leo's Kitchen. Another brown trout here. And I would like to remind everyone, you know, that these trout, beautiful brown too, you know, you can see right away, right? Hooked on the side of the mouth with the lean line spinner. See, the orange red dots are starting to show on its body already, meaning, you know, that this trout has been adapting fairly well to the environment. I would like to remind everyone, right, that I do take a stock trout home to eat, okay, for human consumption. And that's why I don't follow the safe fish handling guidelines for them okay i don't wet my hands for them you know i don't I, i'm not concerned if they splash on the floor and the stuff like that because i am going to end up eating them anyways okay folks but if you were planning on catching and release a stocked trout then definitely you should do it you know you should wet your hands first do, do, do all of those procedures right but like I mentioned, this is a stock trout, invasive species, all right? They, they, they were not native to the United States of America. And the PA Fish and Boat Commission actually does a great job with this stock trout program, right? Even they say it is a catch and take home to eat type of fishery, okay? All right, second fish of the day, same spot. Let's catch some more. The inline spinner is on fire. Let's go. Come on, trout. You don't want to become famous on YouTube. If you, if you do, you better bite. Come on, trout. I know you want to become famous on YouTube. Ooh, fish on. Oh yeah, man, see, as soon as I said it, he wants to become famous, man. This kid right here, don't worry, you gotta become very famous now. Going to my kitchen after all. There we go, inline spinner here, we're on scenario number two. I can't see the trout yet. Oh, there we go. I see it now, it's a brown, it's a brown. It's a feisty brown, no! <laughs> okay, you save yourself, you little trout. He's uh, right under this log right here, but it, uh, that, that fish is going to be fine. Uh, anyways, we're fishing scenario number two right now. Scenario number one, you know, after the rain, right? We were fishing the dam, and I told you guys we were fishing right after the current. We were casting on spots that forms a little eddy. There's a deep hole behind shallow areas. Now we are fishing scenario number two. We have pretty much a stretch of the creek with a flowing current. Okay, and we have this wonderful tree right on this side, as you guys can see, right? This tree stump and stuff here that serves as a current break. And when you have currents and the water level is usually higher than normal in your local tree, in your local creeks, what you want to do, you want to hit spots that have current breaks. Sometimes the trout, they stay just a little after those current breaks or just very close to it so that they can actually ambush prey not to mention that some of them are just resting there, saving their energy, right? They can't be swimming against the current the whole day. So pretty much, you know, we're still using the same setup, going for my, uh, with my inline spinner. Just lost a brown trout, but that is no big deal. We're gonna keep fishing, find more fish. Oh, that's a good cast. Going against the current again, on a 45 degree angle. Fish on, yeah. 45 degree angle right here, man, downstream. Textbook, textbook bite. Oh yeah, oh, it's swimming my way too. What, you are helping me? Oh, good for you, fish, good for you. Wow, yeah, swam all the way to, to, to my front side here. Yeah. Are you going to have the same fate as your brother? No. Welcome to the stardom of YouTube, my friend. Mr. Brown Trout, Salmo Truta. There you go, third one of the day beautiful colors you see those little orange dots on it that is truly gorgeous sometimes i feel bad about eating these fish you know because they're just so gorgeous and they fight so well but then again you know these fish when they're stocked in my local creeks the trout approved waters 
they are an invasive species of fish, okay? They did not belong to this creek to begin with. And the, and the worst part, they compete for food, you know? Once the Bolton Commission stocks them here in the penny pack, they compete for food with the smallmouth bass that were already in the creek. And etc. you know? So, you know, that's why I take them home to eat, right? One more reason, but there you go. Beautiful, huh? Let's keep fishing, catch some more of these. And that pretty much sums up my fishing trip for that day. You know, it started to rain, I had to put the GoPro away. It wasn't the most pleasant day to be out there. It's been raining a lot in Philadelphia. But, you know, anyways, let's talk a little bit about what you have learned in this video, right? Summarizing, there are two scenarios, two very important scenarios, right? For someone to use an inline spinner after heavy periods of rain. And the beauty of, this didactic, of the didactic portion of this video is that this applies for every creek in our world, okay? That's the beauty of it. So if you're watching this from the United States, if you're watching here from Canada, if you're watching this from Australia, China, Japan, Brazil, it doesn't matter where you're watching this from. What I am going to tell you is true to all, to all those places, okay? And, and you ask me, Leo, what is, what is true, right? The truth is that according to physics and according to geology, topography, I would say, when you have creeks all around the world, right? The reality is that you will always have a set of rapids followed by a deep pool of water. Always. Doesn't matter where you are. You are going to have a set of rapids and then a deep pool. Okay? And that was our scenario number one, pretty much, okay? I mean, of course, scenario number one, I was fishing the Roosevelt Boulevard Dam, right? Current comes out, dumps into there, and then you have a deeper pool. And right after the deeper pool, if you guys notice, there was a set of rapids. And if you follow that set of rapids downstream, okay? You may have to walk a little bit, you may have to walk a mile, you may, walk to, you may have to walk half a mile, but I guarantee you, after that set of rapids, there is going to be a deep pool. Because this is just how nature works. This is how topography and physics work, work okay? And this is scenario number one. After heavy periods of, uh, periods of rain, the currents, they get faster. You have more water flowing into the creek. You know, it's muddier, it's nasty, it's murky. Water levels are higher. And fish, in that kind of situation, they like to go to the deep pools, either to rest or to feed. Because the current in the deep pools, right, is, is lower, okay? They don't want to stay in the fast currents of the current, uh, in the fast currents, you know, of the rapids, because that, that would be a waste of energy. So what do they do? They either rest in the deep portions of the deep pool, right? Because to, to save energy, or they come at the beginning of the deep pool and at the end of the deep pool, just before another set of rapids, then they stay there to feed. And that's why when you throw your inline spinner, according to scenario number one, you always want to throw at the beginning of deep pools or at the end of deep pools, like I did in this video, and reel it in slow so it can sink, right? And then the trout hits. That is scenario number one. Scenario number two in the video was actually quite simple too, you know? It was the current break scenario. There was a falling log there in the creek. And of course, you guys can only see what is above the surface, but that log actually extends in the creek, right? Stands in the creek all the way to the middle. So there is like a submerged log over there that breaks the current. And when the current gets slow to a point that the trout can actually swim, let me say comfortably, Okay, that is scenario number two, the current break scenario. The trout, they just stay in the middle of the current. But again, the current, it, it, it can't be too strong, you know? It has to be like a peaceful type of current where the water flows, you know? But flows like not really fast, as you guys saw in the video. And the trout just stay there, you know? And the first trout, I literally cast right in front of me, you know? And I hooked and it fell off. The second one, I did a 45 degrees cast to the right side, right into that 
there's low moving current and the trout hit right away. Why? Because those brown trout, the Salmatruta, they're just swimming against the current, waiting for something to pass in front of them. And when the bug pass in front of them, they go and they hit it. A lot of times in your local creek, you know, you have bugs on top of the water and you will see the trout su surface. It's not like a carp jump, it's not like a catfish jump. You know, it is just a subtle jump, like pluck, it makes a noise, you know. And, uh, you know, and that's exactly how you find out about these things, okay? If you come to me and you ask me, Leo, how did you know that the trout were there feeding in that slow current, right? Of course, I read many books about it. But if, if I'm down there fishing or walking and suddenly I see a trout surface right there, you know, pluck, I have an idea. An idea that those trout are doing exactly what I just explained to you. And these two scenarios, you know, very important scenarios to catch trout on inline spinners when water levels are high and murky, they work all around the world. So if you have this in your head, if you have this idea in your head, you could go to a new creek, any new creek, anywhere, and you could catch fish. You know, as far as your spinner is, is small enough to catch those fish. Isn't that beautiful you know that is that's actually why i post my videos on youtube too you know i want to teach you guys about this kind of stuff so you know when you have this in your head you become more proficient when it comes to the sport of fishing you know and so you can go out there and catch more fish yourselves anyways this is it for today the two scenarios that are actually very very good for fishing for trout with inline spinners after rain i hope you learned a lot from this okay Stay tuned until next video. Thailand's official, folks. Just got a cringe here and not fall. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This is a nice one, bro. Congratulations, man. Thank you. First gator blue ever here. Let me move this to this rock here. Scare, careful, careful. All right, I got it, I got it. Do you have a boba grip or anything? I got the mic shell, the mic shell, the mic shell. Good. I think that works. Just be careful with the mouth, all right? There we go, fellas. Mike's, Mike's first ever bluefish right here. Gorgeous fish. Yeah, you guys can see beautiful fish. We're going to get a weight of this one for releasing.